Tesso. I just packed my car because I'm gonna go to Tessel, one of the islands of Holland. It's a beautiful island. And I'm gonna go there for a few days, finally for having a vacation. Not only that, I'm also going to do a series of studies, skies. I'm gonna make a couple of paintings of skies, oil paint sketches. So I packed my whole car. I made it very nice and tidy. So I'm ready to go, go, go. But first, I'm going to visit a friend in Den Helder. That's the village where the ferry will go to Tessel from. The friend who has got a museum in Den Helder. After uh, seeing the new part of the museum of Rob, I had a very cool conversation with him. Rob is um, kind of a mentor to me, someone that I saw on TV when I was a little kid. And uh, back then I always thought, wow, what if in the future when I grow up I could be an artist just like him. So uh, it's very special to have a conversation with an artist like him. Now I'm going to sleep behind the museum. So tomorrow we will have breakfast together. Bye.
now on the very on my way to Teso. And it's very cloudy and rainy and everything. It's not very good holiday weather, but it will bring some interesting skies and clouds. I'm in the lobby of the Hotel de Zeven Provincien, the seven provinces. And behind me you see a beautiful example of images that refer to a certain symbol in our society. These symbols are so often used on so many different objects, things, prints, paintings or plates. They're almost sort of unconsciously indoctrinated by beautiful pictures like these. They're telling a story. You can think about tulips, pollard willows, black and white cows, important paintings of our Dutch history, and of course windmills. These are a few of the particular Dutch things that are in our collective consciousness. These images are all floating a in the right way will trigger it, trigger it and seeing them will, will and seeing them will always trigger these images are all floating around in our heads unconsciously and seeing them will always trigger a long long history of a connection to this particular object so if you put these things together these pieces of the puzzle the viewer will immediately understand where you're heading Doing this properly will help you telling the story that you want to tell. When you're making a painting like I do right now, it's very important to be aware of these images and these objects and to use them in the right way in whatever kind of art you do. I'm not gonna paint the sunset this time, but this view. I'm recording. I'm recording. Okay, just some, uh, just some clouds, just some quiet little clouds. I mean, the sunset's very interesting, of course. But yeah, I need to study clouds. Pew. As the sun goes down, the colors on the clouds mostly get more and more intense. Where the sun hits the clouds, it's yellowish, orange, sometimes a bit pink. And then the clouds, the shadow on the clouds is a deep blue color.
de heerlijkheid van Tessel. Hello, I'm staying in an awesome bed and breakfast for two nights and it's wonderful. Let me show you inside. It's so super nice. It's small, but the interior is wonderful. Bed and breakfast, the heerlijkheid. And if you're looking for a good bed and breakfast in Tessel, this is definitely a very good choice. The owners of this bed and breakfast, he told me I should go here. This seems to be one of the most beautiful natural places. One of the most natural beauty. One of the most beautiful natural places on the island. Of course, there are a lot, but yesterday I was here, the Koog at the beach there, and that was very crowdy. And then they told me it's the most crowdy place, most crowdy beach on the island. Well, I must tell you this. I'm very happy to stay at a beautiful place like this. So quiet here. <laughs> This morning I woke up right here. It's the slifter. I slept so good. And I woke up so nicely. And the slifter is a very unique natural area. And yesterday I was sitting on top of the dunes, looking over to the direction of the sea, and suddenly I really came to myself. <laughs> I'm delighted seeing that there's a tomato, a tomato growing in my car. I wanted to paint outside, I wanted to paint the windmill, but it's so windy, it's uh, look, oh shit, everything is blowing in my car, that's not what I want for a funny shot, it's so windy, I, I'm afraid it's too windy, but I really wanted to paint the windmill today, but uh, well, I'm gonna try anyway. It's blowing 
so hard. There's a flute in the back of my car. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear the flute making a tune by the wind blowing through the car. It's very weird and funny. <laughs> It's starting to rain! Oh no! A few raindrops on your painting, that's mostly okay. That's mostly fine. As long as it's not like raining very heavy. I'm not in Tessel right now. I'm back home and I'm editing the footage that I made in Tessel. But suddenly when I was taking all the stuff out of my car, I saw the painting with the windmill and what the rain did to it. And it was very interesting to see. Whoa. As you can see, every raindrop, every drop of water pushed all the pigment, pigments, pushed all the pigments aside. So you see lighter dots with a darker line around it. Here you can see a good example. Sort of bubbles, very bubbly. It's not very professional looking or whatever, but quite interesting because it's the weather, the stormy vibe of the weather, the stormy vibe of the atmosphere where the painting is created in is actually on the surface of the painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly, I saw this. Sunset. Whoa. Painting sunsets is difficult. There are just so many colors. tripod and uh, my painting uh, box don't work together anymore like I just fixed it just before I left I guess to, I have to sit in the sand behind my painting box again but that's fine oh, oh. Rob has a diptych of two cigarettes of me in his collection, but I forgot to sign one of them, so this was also a reason for my second visit. 